ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear viewers with Gaidas TV assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of you, guide all of you, keep you in the best hell of health and iman. I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid. I'm coming to you live from Denver, Colorado. That is, let's talk about it, live show. Um, like we promised, uh, that uh, the first 10 to 15 minutes of the show uh, we will begin addressing the issue uh, and the subject of hijab based on the recommendation of one of our uh, regular viewers uh, rather supporters uh, sister uh, Reem Suleiman may Allah reward her but we decided to simply uh, bring this in context. Uh, I would like to speak to your heart and at the same time speak to your mind, intellect. Uh, because the issue is really uh, uh, related to both. Anything in our religion it was not prescribed uh, for the sake of uh, giving people hard time for the sake of uh, simply uh, distressing you and, and, and confining you and jailing you and, and this is very unfortunate that a lot of people have that perception about Islam in fact if you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you find liberty and freedom and this is why uh, when our righteous predecessors and the top of the list is our righteous companions they used to go into these places and um, share the message of Islam with them uh, they used to make that statement we came to free you from the worship of desire and whims and people and to make you worship Allah with that you will gain freedom dear viewers I would like to address the issue of the hijab in context of teaching a surah uh, of course I will not be able to go verse by verse but I will address it um, what we call tafsir mawdu'i subjective explanation of the surah and we are talking about surah al-nur the surah is called the light subhanallah and today inshallah the first uh, of that I will just introduce uh, the themes of that surah but before I begin I want to share with you that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an al-mulham the uh, one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given uh, good understanding good explanation of things he actually sent a message to his leader in Al Kufa, uh, the province of Al Kufa, Al Kufa in Iraq, and he sent to them that message which is made of four words Alimu Nisa'akum Surah Nur. Teach your women 
Surat An-Nur. Now, Umar radiallahu an is addressing the fathers, the husbands, possible the sons sometimes. Why brothers and sisters in Islam? Because Surah An-Nur, the surah is called the light, contains ahkam, the rulings that can protect a Muslim home from falling into wickedness, from falling into fahisha. One of the greatest threats to the first brick in the society, which is the family, is adultery. It is a threat. It ruins the family. It ruins the relationship between the father and the daughter, the husband and the wife, the brother and the sister. It brings animosity and hatred. It can be the reason for having illegal children or children who are born out of wedlock or a wife may do it and end up with a child of another man brought up with a husband with a father that is not the actual father it's a disaster and no one likes that that is why في مسند أحمد حديث أبي أمام الباهلي رضي الله عنه when this young boy young man the teenager approached the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he was sitting with his companions and he asked them he asked him a permission to commit adultery Imagine Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting with his companions and by all the sudden someone approaches the crowd and asking permission to commit adultery. Right away the companions stood up and about to attack him. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them to stop. And he asked them to allow him to come near him. And he said to the young boy, the teenager, Udnu, come closer. And he asked him a series of questions. The first of which, Atarda hada li ummik? Would you like this to happen to your mother? Would you like someone to commit adultery with your mother? قال لا. He said no. قال ولا الناس. Imagine brothers and sisters in Islam, the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم did not say not the Muslims. He said ولا الناس. Not even people. Not even people like that. Of course, we're talking about people who still possess sound fitra but there are people who don't so we're talking about the people who still possess the right fitra they would not like this happening to their mothers the next question would you like this to happen to your sister he said, No, Ya Rasulullah, La Ya Rasulullah, No, O Messenger of Allah. He said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wala Nas, Yardawna Hada Li Akhawatihim. Also, people do, would not like this to happen to their sisters. And imagine, Atarda Hada Li Ammatik, Atarda Hada Li Khalatik. Would you like this to happen to your aunt from your father's side? 
Would you like this to happen to your aunt from your mother's side? The same exact answer, no, and the same exact comment. And people would not like that for themselves as well. That is why it is a major sin, brothers and sisters in Islam. In Islam, adultery is a major sin. And once we talk about adultery from an Islamic perspective, any relationship out of wedlock, out of marriage, and marriage is knowing that you go to the guardian of the women and you propose, and then everyone knows that you are a husband and wife. There are people who are under the impression that they are married, but they are not because they have not fulfilled the conditions which would make the marriage contract valid. They go and write a piece of paper between them and one another and say, we, Allah witnesses, you're my wife, I'm your husband. No. No, brothers, no sisters. That is not marriage. That is still adultery. And this is what is meant by Hadith Abi Malik al-Ash'ari radiallahu an fi Sahih al-Bukhari sayakunu aqwamun min ummati yastahillun al-hira wal-harir wal-khamr wal-ma'azif Time will come from some of my followers will make halal al-hira adultery another word for adultery they introduce different forms of marriage which is not sanctioned by the Islamic law and it's still adultery. Even if you call it girlfriend, boyfriend, even if you call it dating, it is still adultery. Brothers and sisters in Islam, like I said, this sin threatens the family and the family is the first brick in the Muslim community and if that brick is not sound that means the community is not sound that is why Islam cares so much about preventing this from happening and that is why when you open that surah and I would like my dear viewers to maybe explore that surah with me the first verse in that surah is the punishment for those who commit adultery established that the authority would execute that and also provided that four witnesses can witness to that. I don't want to expound on that too much, but you know, the rest of the surah spoke about how to prevent adultery. How to shield oneself, the home, the family, from having adultery. Preventative measures, the rest of the surah. And one of these measures is the hijab. Remember I told you, I want to talk about the hijab in context. Why? One of these measures lowering the gaze that is why you're going to find verses speaking about that one of these measures is seeking permission before you enter into a house that is not yours one of these measures is to make sure 
that you're wearing your hijab and you're not showing your adornment but to those who are lawful to you one of these measures is to marry insha'Allah in our next show bi'idhnillahi ta'ala we will begin exploring one after another of these preventative measures as we go with the surah until we reach the hijab with this dear viewers I'm asking you to uh, call us 1-800-651-4814 let's take some calls Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam My name is Mariam My name is Mariam I'm calling from New York Yes sister um, I wanted to ask Yeah I wanted to ask um, They said when praying uh, for the four attacks before Zulur we have to pray two and two so if I prayed the first, the first two attacks and after the, the salam I talk Okay, let's generalize this question. Our sister is asking, if you miss a voluntary salah, can you make it up? You're supposed to pray, for example, four rak'ahs before dhuhr. You are unable to do that. She's asking, can you make it up? The answer is yes. You can make up voluntary salah after the actual salah. And actually after the time has gone out. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praying after asr. And this is a time when there is some sort of banning. Yet when he was asked, he said, those are the two rak'ahs before dhuhr or after dhuhr because of delegation so and so I was unable to pray them based on this we say yes you can make up voluntary salah after its time Jazakallah khaira Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Wa alaikum salam Naam, name, state and question please uh, Fatima from Toronto Yes, I, I wanted to know, like, if you usually fast Monday and Thursday, and you forgot that today is Monday until morning time, and you remember that I keep going doing with my fast. I wanted to know, without the niya, is this my fast is okay or not? Yes, once it comes to voluntary fast, the mm. jumhur, the majority of the jurist. They ruled that you can formulate an intention during the course of the day, provided that you have not eaten or had something to drink, nor uh, had anything which will would invalidate your fast. Okay. Jazakallah khaira. Thank you. So let me repeat the question again. Our sister is asking, voluntary fast, like today was Monday, she is used to fasting Mondays and Thursdays. She happens to forget. The question is, can she make it up? Uh, I'm sorry, can she uh, do it during the course of the day? Let's say she remembered at 10 o'clock that this is Monday and she actually forgot. We say to her, the majority of the jurists ruled that you can do that provided you have not eaten or uh, had something to drink nor did something which would invalidate your fast. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Naam, name, state and question please. My name is Fanya, I live in Mississippi. And my question is, is it true before you die, uh, shall thing, they will look like your parents and tell you to turn into a disbeliever? Our sister is asking at the time of death, is it true that shaitan may come and basically tries to deceive you and uh, there is in some of the books that they may look like your parents who passed away 
and they would actually say don't die as a Muslim but die as a Christian because this is the right religion don't die as a Muslim but die as a Jew because this is the correct religion and so forth we say Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam made the dua he seeked refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that shaitan doesn't mess up with me at the time of death. And we also learn from his dua, And I seek refuge with you from the fitna during the lifetime and also at the time of death. Based on this we say it is possible that shaitan may come and deceive you. And we have an authentic story that was compiled fi kitab al-sunnah, uh, which uh, is authored by the son of Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, that at the, at the time of his death, the son of Imam Ahmad, Abdullah, I believe if I'm not mistaken, said to his father, Ya Abati, my father, say La ilaha illallah. Because this is what you should do at the time of death. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Laqinu mawtakum la ilaha illallah. Prompt those who are dying to say La ilaha illallah. For he's implementing the sunnah. Now, his father answered in a very interesting way, and he said, not yet, la ba'd, or laysa ba'd, not yet, not yet. The son became worried. Here is his father at the time of death, and he is Imam al-Sunnah, Imam Ahmed. Now, he became so concerned. His father then fainted, then he regained his consciousness and then his son Abdullah asked him, Father, I was telling you to say La ilaha illallah and you were telling me not yet. So Imam Ahmad said to him, My son, I was not speaking to you. I was talking to shaitan. Because shaitan came to me and he said to me, Falatta minni ya Ahmad. You escaped from me, O Ahmad. I was unable to get to you. There is a, another trick which shaitan can get to you through it, causing you to have a big head. Now Imam Ahmad answered them, he said, not yet, I'm still alive, I'm still alive. So based on that, we say it is possible that shaitan may come and tries to trick you at the time of death. وَهَذَا رَأْيِ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ جزاك الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير في البروغرام برادر وإياكم أحسن الله إليك تفضل يا أخي جوهد in order to be within the subject, I heard you talk about zina. May Allah save us from all these uh, uh, sins, inshallah ta'ala. The question I have, brother, is that about the uh, Shia Muslims, I, I don't know if I call them Muslim or not, they talk about Sija, uh, temporary marriage. Uh, if you talk about that, please, and uh, because there is a lot of challenge of them on this dish that they are spreading their words which will uh, actually destroy the community in our young generation. So they talk about uh, what again? What they, what they talk about? They talk about Sira, Sira like temporary marriages. Oh, Zawajul like, Muta. Uh, okay, inshallah. Yeah. And, and please, can elaborate when Muhammad wasallam permitted and how long it was permitted and he bonded, he stopped it. They didn't talk about that. Sure, inshallah. Jazakallah khairah. Ahsanallahu ilayk wa jazakallahu khairah wa barakallahu feek. 
Yeah. Inshallah, we're yeah. planning to, uh, once we, we talk about uh, marriage as a solution uh, to adultery, uh, marriage, ya ikhwa, is a solution to adultery. That is why in Hadith ibn Mas'ud fi Sahihain, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the youth. Ya ma'ashar al-shabab. O youth, males and females. Man istata'a minkum ulba'ata fal yatazawwaj. If you're able to get married, do it. Do it. Why? Because it will protect you. Uh, in one of the wording, فَإِنَّهُ أَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ وَأَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ It will help you to lower your gaze and uh, guard or keep you chaste. Uh, and inshallah, we're going to talk about the conditions quickly. Yani. Uh, ta'ala, I have a series called Love, Marriage and Divorce. Uh, hopefully it will be shown soon on Gaidas TV. Ta'ala. I think they are working on editing uh, it. Uh, which will cover, uh, it's available online, Love, Marriage and Divorce, that's the name of the series, 16 uh, lectures that I delivered here in, in Masjid Abu Bakr, and I spoke uh, thoroughly and in details about the conditions for a marriage contract. And one of these conditions, it cannot be timed. If it is timed, that means it's invalid. And that would uh, strike that uh, temporary uh, marriage contract, which is called Zawajul Muta, uh, right in the heart. Uh, because Zawajul Muta is something that you do temporarily. Uh, you go and tell women, uh, I'm going to marry you for two months. <laughs> come on. Hatta logically, I mean, come on. That's, that's not marriage. Uh, a marriage contract, if you enter into that contract, no reservation whatsoever in your heart. Uh, that this is for a timely, uh, if you have that reservation in your heart, uh, it's already invalid. And if you write that, it's already invalid. Of course, uh, if you have it in your heart, uh, you are held accountable uh, and you're, you will be then cheating. Uh, but if you write it, uh, that would make the marriage uh, invalid automatically. Jazakallah uh, khairan, brother, for the reminder. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam. Name, state and question, please. I'm at al state of Michigan. MashaAllah. And your question tonight? If my question is that if it's also time and I missed prayer for the Dhuhr prayer, and do I pray which salah do I pray first? You have to go with the sequence. Our sister is asking about uh, making up a salah that uh, hopefully she missed because of a reason. Um, the time was already gone. Let's say it's Dhuhr and now it's Asr time. Uh, which salah should I pray? Dhuhr first, then Asr. Jazakallah khaira. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله يسلمك معك أبو أيمن من كندا أهلا أخي أبو أيمن حياك الله تفضل أنا عندي سؤال واحد فقط أنا أشتغل في عيادة مع موظفين غير مسلمين تفضل يا أبو أيمن نعم زملائي بدهم يجمعون مبلغ بسيط يشتروا هدية المسؤول بتاعنا ويعطوا الهدية هذا قبل الكريسماس بس هل في إمكانية أشارك في هذا الهدية بنية جفت مش على أنه نية هدية الكريسماس أبو أيمن لا يجوز هذا Our brother um, let me explain يعني معلش أنا لازم أترجم عشان الناس معظمها بالإنجليزي أبو أيمن بس أنت أخذت الإجابة أوكي. خلاص لا يجوز يعني بدون تفصيل يعني um, Our brother is asking about uh, giving gifts uh, during um, holidays that are not ours, uh, this is not permissible in Islam. It is not permissible in Islam. But again, uh, يعني we don't want to do this in a rude way. Uh, Abu Ayman, يعني نريد أن إيه نفعل هذا بالحسنة. Uh, يعني uh, لا نريد أن يعني إيه إن نحن نقول كلام فاحش حين يعني رفض هذا الموضوع. يعني we should not refuse to contribute or participate in such activities uh, 
uh, in a bad way. Rather, I, يعني أنا يعني أحبذ وإحنا يا إخوة الكريسماس ومش عارف New Year is coming uh, in, 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 in almost 20 days or 30 days, I don't know, in, in, or 25 days. أقول لك من الآن and you should have done this a long time ago مفروض أنك تمهد لهذا الأمر أنك تفهم uh, you should have paved the way to this. Uh, you should have explained to them that you're a Muslim, you do not contribute, you do not participate. أنك لا تساهم في هذه الأمور لأن هذا الأمر قد يعني يخالف عقيدتك. يعني افعل هذا قبل الأعياد. Do this before the holidays. Because if you wait, إذا انتظرت الناس لا تحب أن 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 تفاجئها ب يعني ب بهذا في وقت العيد يعني. Uh, people would not like you to say that or refuse or, or, or at the time of the Eid, at the time of, of the activity, at the time of the f- f- festival or whatever they are celebrating. So you should do this ahead of time. Uh, I take this uh, really from the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the fact uh, that, uh, you know, when, when people are having a deceased person in the family, Muslims, and you try to tell them that Khatm al-Quran or Uh, that particular thing that you do is a bid'ah, they don't like it during the course because they are, uh, they are grieving. Unless if يعني, Allah brings tranquility and, and peace upon them. But uh, people during uh, the time of joy, الناس وقت الفرح وقت الحزن ما بيحبوا ان هم يعني الامر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر مش مش مكانه مش محله. Enjoying good and forbidding evil during that time يا ابي ايمن is not the time. فأنا أنصحك من الآن ويا ريت إنك فعلت هذا يعني بشهرين أو ثلاثة إنك تبين explain to the people بين لهم من أنت أنت مسلم وما عقيدتك ومن هذا القبيل لا بد أن تفعل you must do this before you end up in during the course of of the holidays or during the course of of whatever they are doing and then it becomes more difficult. أحسن الله إليك يا أبا أيمن وجزاك الله خيرا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله. Brother, I have two questions. One is uh, how about the creation, the creation in the house are written Quran. Is okay to do the words? Okay, you're asking about hanging Quran on the wall? Yeah. Our sister is asking about having Quran on the wall. Uh, I would not recommend it. Um, and this is what uh, the majority uh, of the jurists or a considerable number of the jurists, uh, they say we should not use the Quran as a decoration. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. Uh, a blessed Quran which we reveal to you, O Muhammad, uh, so that your followers can reflect upon its meanings. So the Quran is not there uh, to be u- used uh, for decoration, and that is the ground in which uh, a lot of the jurists they ruled that it is not permissible. Jazakallah khaira. Yeah, and I have other questions. Okay. Uh, the cream, skin cream. Lotion uh, has uh, ingredients, alcohol, can we use or? Our sister is asking about using lotions or creams which contain uh, alcoholic ingredients. We say if you can find uh, other uh, ingredients uh, or other uh, uh, materials, agents um, that would not contain alcohol is a lot better. But as long as you're not drinking it, it is permissible. Jazakallah khaira. Oh, yeah. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salaam wa rahmatullah. Naam. Name, state, and question, please. His name is Mississippi. Naam. And your question? When you, when you, uh, if you read the whole Quran, do you, do you read, um, do you read it over and over again? Yes, all the time. You read it over, you finish it, and then you go back again. Why are you, why are you asking this question? You know, like, 
If I ever read the whole Quran, I just, I just want to know it. Okay, our, our uh, caller here is asking about uh, reading the whole Quran and finishing it. Does this mean that you don't have to go back and read it? Absolutely not. You read it, you finish it, you go back and read it, you finish it, you go back and read it. Because every time that you read a letter of the Quran, Hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, fi uh, Sunan, Sunan al-Darimi, wa tirmidhi and others, Man qara'a harfan min kitab Allah, Whosoever reads one letter from the book of Allah, فَلَهُ بِكُلِّ حَرْفٍ حَسَنَةٍ For each letter he receives a hasana. وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا And the hasana is automatically multiplied ten, ten times. وَلَا أَقُولْ أَلِفْ لَا مِيمْ حَرْفٍ وَلَكِنْ أَلِفٌ حَرْفٍ وَلَا مُنْ حَرْفٍ وَمِيمٌ حَرْفٍ And the Quran is cure. When you read it, you cure your heart from diseases. It cleanses your heart. And also the Quran is a book of guidance. When you recite it and reflect upon its meanings, it guides you. Jazakallah khaira. Okay, shukran. All right. Uh, we have uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Nasser. Uh, thank you for answering life uh, and my question is a part of my question is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has given a permission in one time to offer uh, permission would that take away what would be I, I the, the question okay let me just answer this caller and I will go uh, Islam can you um, uh, can you summarize that question for me please because I can't read these lengthy uh, questions. If you want me to answer your question on the air, if you're sending emails, Brother Nasser, uh, just uh, maybe one line or two lines, because I, it's very difficult for me to read uh, lengthy emails. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Um, Minnesota. I okay. just have a couple of questions. Okay. My first question is, is if you can just tell me what the... Uh, Sunnah in the Quran say about female circumcision. All right. And your question. And my, sorry, go ahead. And your second question. Um, that's my second question was um a few weeks ago you talked about raising children in America and I was just wondering is there any books or um, stuff that you could recommend that we can read? Inshallah, I'm working on a series. Uh, there are a lot of literature available, but um, it's very unfortunate that they are all, uh, the majority of the work I know it in Arabic. I'm not sure if anybody translated anything, but I want to tell you right now uh, that, um, uh, inshallah, I'm working on a series right now. That's my next project, bi uh, So mm -hmm. hopefully you will have something, inshallah. But... Um, for now, uh, if you're a good Arabic uh, yani learner or you can learn in Arabic, there are plenty of literature available in Arabic. Jazakallah khaira. Oh, yeah. did you answer my other question? Okay, uh, the uh, female uh, circumcision, uh, it is established in our religion, but we have to be careful with the laws of America. Uh, it is against the laws here in America, so uh, this is something that you're going to have uh, to check and uh, pursue. Jazakallah khaira. All right. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Naam, name, state, and question, please. Uh, Okay. Okay, Ibtihal, go ahead. You go to the next day. Uh, will Allah forgive you for all the bad things you have done? Okay, that's correct. If Allah accepts you, if you, uh, you win there, our sister Ibtihal from Mississippi, she's asking about uh, going for Hajj. Uh, will Allah forgive all your sins? Uh, the answer is yes. We hope, provided that you fulfill uh, the pillars and the conditions of the act. You're going there not to show off sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and you uh, followed the uh, tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in uh, performing uh, the Hajj or the Umrah for which you went for and also you performed an accepted one Mabrur, you had a good character uh, there are certain conditions for Hajj and Umrah that you must fulfill uh, in order to come back sinless okay uh, I believe our brother Nasser uh, is the same caller who called uh, about that temporary marriage and inshallah we will uh, go over uh, the history of Zawaj al Muta'a that it was permissible at one stage and then it was banned on the day of Khaybar and amazing that the narrator of the hadith is Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Nah. I have a question. Nah. Name state. Yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, the Sheikh is going to answer, or are you going to answer? I am the Sheikh. <laughs> I am supposed oh, to okay. be. I'm supposed to be a Sheikh. I have I'm a question. A... Okay, go ahead. I have, I have three little children, and I work full time. And uh, it's really like I work seven days. I have to do all the cooking, the cleaning. My husband does help me. But it's like, you know how the kids, it's all on me. And at the same time, I get very frustrated. My, I have to send money to my family back home. I have to pay bills here. But then, after all that I, I go through at the end of the day, my husband wants me to come and have sex. I cannot. Mentally, psychologically, physically, I am exhausted. It's not, it's not something that I can do. Like, I don't even think about that part. It's not, it's very uncomfortable. It's just not something that I want to do at that point because I'm tired. Okay, yeah. I got it. And I heard that in the Quran, I'm going to be punished for that. So I don't know. After all that I'm going through, and I can't do that at that point. Okay, I got so it. What can I, I allow me to answer you, please. All right. Uh, dear viewers, uh, a big issue that uh, we have um, uh, in every Muslim home almost uh, a husband who cannot support the family uh, the wife has to go out and co-support the family with him she has to work she has a full-time job and it's very unfortunate that a lot of the husbands are still expecting the wives to do the same exact work which they would do if they are just homey, staying at home. Yani. And this is wrong. Brothers, uh, dear husbands, when your wife goes out to work, you simply lose half of your qawama. Listen to the verse. Al-rijalu qawamuna ala nisa bima faddalallahu ba'dahum ala ba'd wa bima anfaqu min amwalihim. We as men love to read the first half of this verse, but we fail to complete uh, يعني, the next portion, which is men are the guardian, uh, supporters, sustainers of women. Men are in charge of women. That's another way to put it. Why? What are the criteria? Criteria number one, because of the way that Allah fashioned them. بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض الله given the man certain qualities for him to be out there uh, in the jungle earning the bread but here is the second component وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم and because they spend on the wives they take care of them financially now if the wife goes out you lost half of your قوامه uh, in the house then don't expect uh, uh, a full housewife here. You have to still help her. You have to still provide uh, some assistance. Uh, even once it comes to uh, eating, uh, taking care of the children and so forth. Let me come to the issue which she raised. It's a, a very sensitive area, a very sensitive question. And my sister is so courageous to bring it up on the air, alhamdulillah. And I think it's worthy of addressing. 
Now, when a person goes to work exhausted, tired, um, let me use some decent words here, um, that drive is not there. They are tired. They are not as fresh as uh, they would be if they are staying at home. <laughs> That's people when they get tired, this, this thing goes away, is not there anymore. Uh, now, you as a husband must make sure that you don't force it on her. Uh, you have to maybe do something about it. Uh, maybe choose a day off. Uh, maybe um, change the atmosphere, the environment, because women are not machines. You know, they, they require uh, to be in the mood to make this happen. But at the same time, let's balance this, because this is a very dangerous thing. Men are out there as well, exposed to fitna. You know how women are these days, at the workplace. So the brother is looking, you know, at his co-worker, who is a female, and she comes to work like uh, coming to a fashion show. And she is showing all these icons or uh, items of temptation, I don't want to go there, and now he gets, you know, excited. Now what is he going to do? So. The issue is really sensitive because if yani, uh, there is something about men, they have no patience once it comes to this issue. Uh, and the solution for him is to fulfill it. Uh, but meanwhile, he want to get it like uh, a machine or you know something that he doesn't want to put the work. Uh, now that's where the balance must come in, must come in place. And, and I'm trying to be because I know there are a lot of uh, uh, children watching and I, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to be as, as uh, politically uh, sound as possible. Uh, basically, we have to work together. You cannot force her. You cannot force her to do it in that way. You have to uh, bathe the way, uh, if I may use that term or choose the right proper time when she's not tired and at the same time the wife cannot totally ban him because this will cause um, will have serious consequences that if he is not fulfilled uh, desire wise he may go somewhere else and seek that fulfillment and you're gonna end up with a bigger problem at your hand I hope I help you my sister Jazakallah khaira Okay, let me see here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Brother, I have, I have two quick questions. I'm hoping you can answer me. Hurry up because uh, I still have only yeah, five first, minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, uh, my name is Wajma and I'm calling from New York. And uh, I had a question. Um, is, is a, well, could a woman make wudu while she's uh, in her cycle? For what this wudu? Excuse me? Why would she need to make wudu when she is in her cycle? Uh, because uh, they say like before you sleep you have to make wudu so i was just saying will, will my wudu be accepted if like when a woman is during their cycle well during your cycle to come out of that state of major ritual impurity what you would need to do is um you know uh, do ghusl uh, but this is when the blood stops uh, quite frankly I, it's the first time i hear this question and that's why i'm thinking uh, but let me, uh, and I could be wrong, I could be mistaken, maybe I should do some research, but let me tell you that. Okay. Based on the hadith that uh, having intercourse with your spouse, 
and uh, basically um, and you're unable to take uh, a bath which will lift the major ritual impurity uh, this was actually was established that the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, sometimes he would uh, not be able to take ghusl, uh, the, uh, the, the path, the ritual path, which will lift the major ritual impurity, the state of Janaba, uh, before he goes to sleep and he would go and make wudu. Based on that, I tell you, using analogy, that's fine before you go to sleep. Uh, but make okay. sure that you don't understand that this wudu, this ablution, qualifies you to do any uh, rituals which would require ablution that you're not going to pray a hope uh, and and so forth but based on that we i could say and i could be wrong yani, uh, that's my little ijtihad uh, which i got right on the spot here yes your second question okay. please now okay i'm sorry to ask you again okay and i understand women are is not allowed to pluck their eyebrows you made it very clear last time but not to change the shape, just to clean like around it. Is that is that also not permitted? The problem is around it. What's around it? I mean, around it. You know, it? like, <laughs> I mean, not to make a shape out of it. Just to like, when you have like extra, like little pieces of hair under your eyebrows, could you pluck that out or that's not permitted either? You see that, uh, I hope you're going to see the shape of the eyebrows. The shape, this is my eyebrows. You cannot take any of it. Oh, okay, but so now, the, uh, extra ones, that's, anything, that's okay, the fish, like. the fish shell here, any hair away from that area, the jurors, they say it's permissible for women to remove it. But, oh, so that's permissible. Okay. No, no, no. But listen, listen, so. listen, listen, listen. But make sure it's not from the shape. Like, yeah, not from the shape. I okay. just mean like excessive, like extra. Yeah, from your facial. Yeah, the jurors, they say women are permitted to do this. Jazakallah khairan. Like around your eyebrows. All right. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Islam, how many minutes we still have? Two, two minutes. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. Let me see here if we Thank can. Thank you very much. Afwan, afwan. Barakallah fiyah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Here is our last caller. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If they can help us in two minutes. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Alaikum assalamu warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Naam. Naam. My name is Rabia Bintu Abdallah Abdul Shaheed. And Naam. I have a question about. Um, uh, the w circumcision of women in Islam, whether or not it's permissible or not, whether it's a sunnah in Islam. Ya Ukhti, alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We address this subject over and over again and we don't want to get in trouble with the laws of the land. Uh, it, it is uh, in Islam, it is a practice in Islam. Uh, sometimes it is um, uh, established uh, based on the size of, of, of the piece of, of flesh out there. Uh, but again, uh, a disclaimer, uh, watch over the laws of the land. Jazakallah khaira. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right. Um, with this, inshallah, we, um, we are good today. I think we are good today. Alhamdulillah. We did good. We love you all for the sake of Allah. And I'm sorry, I still have all these uh, questions on my email. Uh, Sh Shira Sherwan will answer you inshallah next week. Uh, next, uh, when, when are we coming back? On Wednesday, we have Naseem and Nick Johns. And also Barry, uh, we have also a question for a man. We still have tons of callers. Uh, sorry about that. We love you all for the sake of Allah. But we'll see you again Wednesday. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.